ORFIS area calculation is a new calculator that has been added to the ORFIS dialog and it's a calculator and when you launch it, it takes you to a dialog where you're able to specify uh, the shape, circular or rectangular, although that's duplicated here in the main dialog and then accordingly you can enter diameter uh, and height or width or diameter for circular and clicking the OK button would return the orifice area to the dialog. This was you know, essentially one of the items requested by users that the orifice area they always had to do a hand calculation to figure out the input. They knew for example they wanted a three inch orifice however uh, they had to go and hand calculate and then uh, we allow now a direct input uh, of the dimension and then of course calculate the area for the users. What I'll do now is I'll switch to the software where I have a model already loaded uh, which contains uh, an orifice. In fact it has a very complex discharge structure. So here my pond node for example has the storage data attached as stepwise linear where we've described the depth from the invert all the way up to the top of the pond or the node spill crest. And then in the multi-link downstream I have described a complex discharge structure that has two orifices and two weirs. The visualization of such a structure can be attached to a linker node under the properties. You can attach a picture and with a picture attached uh, to the properties you can then right click and choose view image. You can see in this image for example a circular low flow orifice right here at the water level which I believe I've labeled as the bleeder and then there's a rectangular orifice a little bit higher. There's uh, a notch here which you could simulate as a weir. And then the entire rim of this structure, if the water level would get to such a level, you could assume that that would be weir flow as well. So let's see how this has been entered into the multi-link dialog. It's been entered by having two orifices and two weirs. There isn't any special rule to the numbering here. Uh, if you have a favorite number that's, you know, three, then you could put it in three. It's just a convenient way for you to organize the information. You can have up to seven of each of these elements, seven conduits, pumps, orifices, and weirs. My particular, uh, my own particular uh, method of doing things is I put the lowest item in row one and the next highest in row two, etc. So if we go to row one, this is where I have my bleeder and with this bleeder um, let's say I want it to be a three inch orifice and I don't know what that area is I could click on the calculate button it brings up this dialog uh, I can pick circular and I would put in because this is a value in feet you can see feet here and uh, I will put in 0.25 feet for three inches, click the OK button, and it happens to return for me this orifice area of 0 0.0491. So essentially it's just a very small tool, but it can definitely help you uh, calculate the area without having to go elsewhere outside of the program. Similar calculators exist in other parts of the program, and so we've expanded it to the orifice area. The next or second orifice happens to be a rectangular one. Here I've marked rectangular and I've entered the orifice height here already, but if I wanted to um, compute the area, because I need orifice area, then I could switch here the calculator to say I want to calculate for rectangular. And my height is say six inches and it's say one foot wide and click the OK button and it returns for me this orifice area. So of course now that I've got those dimensions in use then I would uh, quickly be able to uh, solve the model now 
uh, with those areas since area is the required input to the model. Uh, finally, I think just since I'm here in this dialogue, I'll mention to you that there is the ability in the software to um, vary an orifice over time. It's outside of the real-time control module, so if you didn't have the real-time control module, you can still vary an orifice with time. For example, you might want to assume that a small orifice might be able to plug or clog, so you can see I've got the area here uh, at 0 0.05. Uh, essentially, I just rounded that number. And then after two hours, it plugs and the orifice area is virtually zero or 0 0.001. So that would just another idea for you if you wanted to be able to model that an orifice can clog or plug over time, you'd be able to do that. Mm -hmm.